Hello everybody. Welcome back to my life. The Chronicles of a Lonely Welshman. So, <laughs> I had my head down just now. I'm kind of just stomping in the direction that I want to go. And then I hear a sheep stampeding towards me. There was a sheep stuck behind this gate. And just, I look up and it's running right at me. Luckily, sheep are harmless. They're not gonna do anything, but they're big. <laughs> Jeez, this thing's scary looking. Check this out. size of those spikes. Gee. It's the kind of stuff you do not want in your foot. The sky basically is this. It kind of sucks. So I'm not gonna get any sun or any blue sky today. And just knowing that has like frustrated me this morning. So I'm forcing myself to walk. I have to. If I feel like crap I have to get outside and then I feel better when I come back. Like for me, because I'm, I'm my own boss, I work my own hours, I tell me what to do. <laughs> if I'm ever having a bad morning, I have to do something about it. I can't stay in that mindset because I get nothing done. It's like this really self-destructive mindset that ruins my work. I said this yesterday, doing any project takes me a long time because I can't control the imbalances. It's just all up and down all the time. It's frustrating, like I wanna get things done on time but it's just constantly vroom. I was just reading some YouTube comments and you guys have been leaving loads. <laughs> like there's a lot for me to read. But I noticed that so many people, especially in the video when I was talking about uh, my friend not coming up to see me, everyone was assuming things. Everyone was assuming that the reason I'm not going to her is because of the daily vlog. I think I probably said that in the video, but that's not the only reason. We've been taking it in turns going back and forth because it costs so much to visit each other. It's like 80 to 100 pounds each each time. I've been to her twice. I went to her in October and I went to her in January. And she's been here once in November. So we were going back and forth. The biggest reason she can't come here, which I should have elaborated on in the video, was that she only has like four or five days off work. So it's like not that much time. We've been spending like a week with each other each time usually. We both decided that we were prioritizing work we're sacrificing the small rewards for the bigger reward in the end. I was just upset because that's like the only social thing I was looking forward to. I was looking forward to Charlie coming to see me and then Poppy coming to see me. But yes, the daily vlog is a huge reason why I can't go to places. Because I don't have a laptop, I can't edit on the road anymore. And I don't really want to do that. It's, it's exhausting. When you're traveling and trying to upload, it's exhausting. That's why when I make these things, I'm only out for a couple of hours and then I go back and work. Because if I was out all day, then go home and edit, I wouldn't have any energy to do anything. I would pass out. Like As it is, this year I'm using so much more energy each day than I ever would usually in winter. Usually I have like twice the energy than I currently have. But because I'm not getting any of that sunlight, it's so hard. <laughs> it's really difficult. I'm using so much energy that when I actually finally go to bed, I'm out cold the whole night and then when I get up in the morning I feel like a boulder. I feel like a boulder. Large round hard rock. But yeah, it was just upsetting how I even said in the video, I don't want to say too much to you guys because you'll judge me. But you're all... So many people were just making assumptions. And they're saying that I'm a bad person for prioritizing the vlog over seeing someone. But that's just it. If I don't have work, I can't see people. They go together. If I'm not working, or if I, if I stop daily vlogging to go see someone for a few days, it's gonna be so hard for me to get back on that horse. Sometimes when I get knocked off, it takes me months to get back into a routine, to get back to creating. That's why I'm forcing myself to do it daily. If I don't, I don't know when on that next upload. I can see friends and still post, but we need to live closer. That's the whole, the whole point. That's the whole thing I'm working towards. But yeah, because of those comments, I'm now going to share way less personal stuff, especially when it comes to like friendships. Because I'm just tired of assumptions. I've deliberately kept relationships offline for, for years now, since um, my German girlfriend, because people don't need to know all those intimate details, and people make assumptions, and it's so frustrating. If I was a much larger YouTuber and I posted the vlog that I did the other day, I'd, I'd feel like crap. Having hundreds of people telling you what to do and what not to do. It's exhausting. 
But yeah, there were a lot of nice comments in between all the other ones, people assuming stuff. It's hard to respond to those when I'm seeing all this other stuff, just people saying things at me, saying assumptions. It seems that everyone in the YouTube comments is like a relationship expert. I'm not even in a relationship, I don't need <laughs> expert advice. I just wanted to see my friend and she can't come see me now. When I woke up this morning and I saw the weather, I wanted nothing more than to eat an edible. Like, I don't think you guys understand my relationship with weed before it became a problem. I would use it on, on bad days, days where the weather looked like crap, days where I didn't want to get out of bed. I would know as soon as I woke up that if, if I couldn't get up myself, I had that, I had that aid. And I could take, take an edible, get my yoga done, and then go outside and enjoy the day. And it would keep me outside for, for the entire day. I would love it. It doesn't matter what the weather is when you're on an edible. Because everything is just great, it feels amazing. I think when I was in Spain, I was abusing it because I was taking edibles on really sunny days because every day was sunny. And then it was losing its magic because I used to use edibles to make the terrible days better. Make the terrible days feel like sunny days. But yeah, I just, even though it's nearly been a year now, I still got that feeling, the reminder of what it feels like to eat an edible on a bad day because it just makes everything so amazing. But I have to ignore that feeling. I still have two more months before I can make the decision whether or not to come back to drugs. When I decided to call it quits for a year, I had the intention of coming back, but who knows? I still have two more months to make a decision on whether I want that. Now, I was never taking drugs that are bad for me. I was just getting addicted to the, to the good drugs. That was the issue. But I feel like I proved to myself and to everyone else that it wasn't as bad as I thought. Like, sure, I would go on edible binges, get nothing done for a couple months. That's because I had no guidance. I had a very small friend circle in Spain and they were all stoners too, so it's not like I had the best role models to get work done. If I took weed in a responsible environment, that hey, it wouldn't be a problem, but who knows? I was just attracting what I was. Psychedelic plants are just, they're psychedelic plants. It's so hard to control or understand them fully. But dude, I miss it so much. If in two months time, I'm still daily vlogging some by some miracle, and I decide to come back to, to, to weed, to psychedelics. I'd have to do an edible in the morning, first thing in the morning, so that I can go out, film a vlog, and then be sober by the time I'm gonna edit it. My issue before is I was getting high, and then staying high throughout the night, sometimes double dosing in the, mid, in the middle of the day, and I would just go to bed super stoned. I wouldn't actually get any work done, so. I would have to have that self-control to not double dose, and to, I don't know, just be sensible with it. Be sensible with the dose, first of all. I was doing 100 milligrams plus every day. It's quite a lot. If I lowered it to maybe 20 or 50, then I could probably still get things done. We'll see when it comes to it. It's just, I don't know, every every couple of weeks, this feeling comes back. That reminder of how amazing weed is. It's a miracle plant and I miss it. I would feel so much better if I had it, but I don't know. I, I can't tell you what the feeling is like being sober for a whole year, telling myself no. I can't tell you what that feels like yet because I haven't reached that point. I'm only 10 months in. I don't know, there's something about having a clear mind for 10 months because it's really helped me zone in on my goals and what I actually want. I'm a very goal-oriented oriented person. Um, I'm very driven when I know what I want. Well, what I want right now is some weed. <laughs> two options. Which one do I want to take? I know that I'm very privileged to get to walk in nature for my job, but it's taken years to get to this point. It's, I didn't just do this overnight. I created a, so a social presence online that took me 10 years. So now I get to walk around in nature every day. I think the dream job is being able to work outside all day every day. 
but I haven't gotten to that point yet. I still have to go home and edit. But I realized that these trails, there's never anyone on them, ever. People either don't care or they're too busy, which is what I, I think is true. And it's a real shame. The amount of billions of humans we have, but people are too busy to enjoy the planet that we're living on. I feel like that's a really pessimistic point of view, but that seems to be what's happening, right? Am I wrong here? People are too busy. They're too busy to get their feet on the ground. And that's kind of scary. Because it means if our lives are disrupted even a little, people don't know what to do with themselves. They haven't gotten used to spending time in nature. We're very comfortable in our houses and in our expensive cars and in our offices and schools. But hey, when you take all that away, then what? You need to be comfortable with nature. It's all that was here before us and it's all that will remain when we inevitably kill ourselves. I don't know the name of that tree. Does anyone know? It's got these needles. I need to carry a book around. I keep saying I'm going to do it and I never do it. Can someone remind me in the comments to say, hey Jason, remember to buy that, that book of British trees so that I can stop asking you what they are. But I appreciate it. Every time I do ask, someone in the comments has the right answer, so thank you. When I have the right word to look, then I can research what I'm looking for and learn a bit, a bit, about, a bit about these trees. So somebody in yesterday's video comments said, the reason pink and yellow and white flowers pop up first in spring is because bees and pollinating animals, uh, po pollinating bugs are attracted to those colors the most. So it starts the whole pollination process. So I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what they said in the comments and it sounds true. But then why not just have all the other colors? They're, surely they're attracted to all colors. I realized that when the sun doesn't come out very often, I let my hair fade down to nothing. I haven't dyed it in months. My hair is everything, it brings me joy. So I need to get the vibration going again, get the vibrant colors back in. Raise my vibration with the color. Stop wearing all black. I feel like tie-dyeing clothes and tie-dyeing my hair, it's all the same. So I need to bring it all back in and then my mood will elevate and I'll start to feel more like spring, summer. I noticed that my friend Pop, she hoops every day. She, she wears like crop tops and, and dances around like it is spring. Even though for me, it's still winter. She dances around like it isn't, and then it makes her skin glow, it makes her face glow. She seems happier. So like, I'm kind of taking inspiration from her. I need to start behaving like it's spring, summer, and then I'll start to feel it. And then the weather will change. I need to stop acting like it's winter because it's not even that cold. And for the first time in a long time, I've looked at the weather. This week, we have like four or five sunny days coming. So, I want to do some stuff. I want to get some hikes in. I want to do some mountains that I've never done before. I want to swim. I haven't swam this year. Ah, you suck rocks. Well, it's a black sheep. I am also a black sheep. Bah. No, I can't even call myself a sheep. I'm more of a, I'm more of a Komodo dragon. <laughs> no, maybe not. More of a, a deer. I think I mentioned this in a vlog before. This cottage and the one up there. They're both completely abandoned. I just found out, I went around the back of that one. There's a window open, so I can go inside and have a look, but I'm not gonna do it. It's weird, when a house isn't like falling apart, it feels so wrong to go inside it, but it is abandoned. No one's lived there the whole time I've been here. I'm looking for some new OnlyFans locations. I want to swim in there so bad. I just can't bring myself to do it.
It's steep enough to jump off this rock too, but it's so freezing. The sun is really trying to come out. Try harder, sun. Blow all the clouds away, please. I need light. Okay, I found another corpse, so look away if you don't want to see this. There's a baby sheep. There's no skull. I don't know who keeps stealing the skulls, but they're always gone. Nature's gnarly. Okay, I found a spot that I want to photograph. It's in the middle of the river though. So there's a river on this side, river on that side. There's gr green bank in the middle here. And there's a rock there that I can put the camera on. Hopefully it looks nice. But this is quite deep. So... I have to use stepping stones to get across now. I just have this feeling of something something inviting me into the woods. But now that I'm in here, I can't identify what was drawing me in. I'm looking for someone to just sit down and write an Instagram caption because I haven't done that in so long. And I need to, you know, I need to get my words out there. If any of you do follow me on Instagram, I do apologize for not posting anything. It just gets a bit overwhelming doing a daily vlog, OnlyFans, all, this, all the things I do and then also writing long Instagram captions, like it's not easy. I admire anyone that can do all of the socials every day. A like, good job. Don't even talk to me about TikTok, I haven't posted on there in months. <laughs> I just sat by the river for a little while and just thought about all the friends that I would like to be with right now. In the past when I've been hanging out with friends, maybe I've not appreciated that time enough because I thought I wouldn't lose it, but <laughs> now here, here I am. My friends are getting older, they're getting busier. Everyone's so busy. Maybe it's time to make some new friends. Some new friends that have their own schedule. They can just do whatever they want, whenever they want. It's just hard, you know? It's hard to find people that have that time that aren't unemployed. It's hard to be friends with people that are unemployed because they don't have any drive in them. You need friends that have work ethic because it inspires you to work. I don't mean like dead end work, I mean fulfilling work. How have I never seen this footpath? I've never seen this. I've walked this path so many times, I've never seen this part. So I looked at my map, my Pokemon map, and it says that there's, there's a footpath up here, like an official one. Because the one that I walk, it's not really official. Wow. And it's like this way somewhere. So because of that, I was looking in this direction and I've never seen that footpath before. Wait, no, I have been here. Long, long time ago, I've been here before. I remember hanging out on here. Weird. Last time I was here, it was like summer. Like years ago. I made a vlog here. I doubt anyone can remember that one though. If anyone remembers the vlog where I was hanging out on this thing, I was like playing around on it. If you can remember it, put the link down below. Be really interested to watch. 
that's like the most complicated part about vlogging is that I don't really have a good way to catalogue things. I don't number the vlogs. I know today is day 58 of daily vlogging, but I don't know what episode it is. It could be episode like 220, I don't know. I need to go through and number each one of the vlogs somehow. So there's supposed to be a footpath around here. I mean, there's this. There's a sheep track. There's no human footprints. Just sheep. So according to this, the footpath is over there. And there's these two gyms. They've been occupied for 32 days. <laughs> Someone's just been sitting in there for 32 days. They're like secret gyms, I didn't know about them. So I need to find that path, which apparently is in the field. But I like this path in the woods a bit better, so I'm gonna follow this, and then eventually find a way onto that path. How interesting, I just didn't know any of this existed. Even though I have been here before, apparently. My brain's like, yeah, you've done this before. I, just don't, I don't remember. Woo. They're not very old bottles. I've been hiding down here because I'm in the woods right next to someone's house. I was coming to these trees and then I saw a car right there. There was a car right next to me. And then the guy got out of the car and started dragging his recycling bins back to his house. It's just funny. I don't know if I'm supposed to be in here. That's why I like to hide, but it's also just fun feeling that mischievous feeling. Anyway, there's supposed to be a footpath right here. So I guess we just climb over the fence and go in. I don't know where I am. I don't recognize this place at all. I think I want to try it. There's the trail. The trail just, just goes through fields, but it's public access, so I'm allowed to do it. There's still old Welsh cottages. Farm cottages. Some tiny little lambs over there. Really small. It's gonna be a lot of sheep sounds in the next two months. They're all giving birth. Modern wall, weird to see. The brickwork is so different to the old stuff. I quite like this walk back, I've never really been this way. It's nice, you get to see the mountains again. Because usually I follow the river and then come back around on myself. My phone's dying, but I'm desperately trying to get a photo of this. Come on, phone. It's really strange to me to see modern walls. Um, I just wanted to show it. Like, like, look at the way they build them now. They're really compact. Layered on top of the flats, very clever. Triple layer of stone. Some quartz, like I was saying before. They build the quartz now. It's just like packed in really nice. And then there's the old wall, the bigger rocks. Very nice, like that's, that's some excellent work. But who knows? Who knows if they'll stand the test of time? I kind of like the old way they did it. They just piled rocks and hoped for the best. And a lot of them are still here. Like, this is all old. Anyway, enough of that obsessing over walls again. All right, I just had a wonderful stream. I definitely was on there too long. I need to manage my time better. Like, um, I'm definitely spending too much time on stream. Uh, but thanks, thanks, thanks guys, I had a, a lot of fun. We built the Great Wall of China. Is that all we did today? I'm sure we did other stuff, but we were there for a little while. Anyway, I, I, did a, I did a smart. I prepared two lots of meals yesterday, so that I didn't have to cook today. So that's why I stayed on stream a bit longer. But I am hungry and tired and just the life of the day is vlogging. I should just end these vlogs earlier. Because I always end it in the dark in my office. <laughs> uh, thanks for hanging out, guys. Once again, uh, hit that like button. See you tomorrow. Bye.